This is how to use simulations for success in internal assessments, chemistry for IB diploma. Um, there are only a few sites which I would suggest that you actually use. One is this called Chem Collective. We'll have a look at ChemReacts shortly. We have to be very careful that we are actually using a simulation which is going to give us um, a range of information, a range of values in the dependence variable and the ability to change the independence variable at least five times. So things like dilution problems, uh, concentration of coke, uh, making stock solutions are all very good teaching tools but they do not lend themselves to the IA criteria. In fact nothing in here in stoichiometry I can see would lend itself to the rubric for success at certainly anything beyond the lower levels. So limiting reactants, again, nothing in there. We can do that on a piece of paper. We don't need uh, our laboratory or a simulation to do that. Within thermochemistry, there are some nice, again, teaching tools, heat of reaction of aqueous solutions. Uh, I've had a look at that one. It's quite limited. There are only three things you can change in there, so that's not applicable. Measuring the heat capacity of an engine coolant, okay, um, you could maybe have a look at that, but you only come up with one result, and one result propagated is not enough to meet the criteria. Hess's Law, you'll find dozens of Hess's Law simulations on the internet. This is just one example. Again, I wouldn't suggest that we do this. Uh, Cobalt Chloride and Le Chatelier's Principle, uh, LCP, is a good one to think about and to discuss because clearly there are limitations with Le Chatelier's principle, which you should be aware of. Uh, exothermic, endothermic direction in relation to changing the volumes of the reactants or the products at constant uh, pressure. Uh, how could you qualitatively predict which direction it will go into? Uh, in here, again, we only have three different solutions. I suspect that we could uh, change the dilution of them. Go into the stock room. We have some water here. And we also have our uh, solutions, cobalt 2 chloride. Here we have one molar. And you will find as you get used to playing with the virtual laboratory settings, it's actually really quite good. Volumetric flasks, beakers, pipettes, measuring cylinders, LMA flasks. So here's a 250 beaker. If I want to pour something into a 250 beaker, I just take my cobalt chloride, drag and drop it over the top. As I release, the instruction that I want to do is to pour. Let's pour 10 cm cubed into there. And there you can see 10 cm cubed has been decanted into the beaker. What is nice in here, perhaps as a development tool to get into used to using this software, is that we can see the molarities given to, uh, well, that's nine decimal places, isn't it? So as we add little bits of water, let's throw one cm cubed of water into here and pour. There we go. We can see the molarities changing of the uh, cobalt chloride uh, COCl42 minus, the chloride, the hexahydrate, uh, 2 plus cobalt ion uh, hydroxide, and the protons. Hello, welcome back. So if you go to chemcollective.org, go to the virtual lab tab, and uh, we're looking in solubility, and we want the temperature and the solubility of salts. As you land into this screen, we are presented with the workbench, and we can see here that we have some tools. We have a Bunsen burner and a scale. We have some glassware, LMAs, graduated cylinders. You can read all the things that are in there. In others, we do have a foam cup, a weighing boat, and a 50 mil burette. I'm not using that today. We've got a very large container of distilled water, three decimeters cubed. And at the bottom, hidden down here, let's take 100 mils of distilled H2O. It tells me H plus is 1 by 10 to the minus 7. That's great. 25 degrees C, that's why pH is 7, 7.00 here. I have a temperature uh, gauge here. It's not a slider. You can't drag and drop it. I'll show you how to change that shortly. So let's have our 100 cm cubed distilled water. Let's go back to the stock room. In here, let's select a salt. I'm going to select sodium chloride. Sodium chloride, it tells me how much I have in the bottle, which today is 128.568 G, G here. If I want to add some sodium chloride to here, I just drag a drop over the top. You can see the plus sign, release your clicker, and I want to add 100.0 grams. And then I click 
poll. There we go. Get rid of that. This now has 129.45 ml and 100 grams of sodium chloride has been added to my distal water. I can see over here that my species are constantly changing. Uh, they are not settled as yet. They will. And here we have the amount in grams of sodium chloride which is sat at the bottom of the Erlen Mayer flask. Now, you can see these are constantly changing. Also, the temperature is changing. This is trying, the software is actually very sophisticated and is resembling or mimicking, mirroring real life. This is what would happen. So what I need to do is I want to fix the temperature. So here we, uh, let's start again and add new workbench. So we added distal water and we also added our sodium chloride, which is here. Okay. We can right click on each of these and I can edit the thermal properties. Okay, so currently this is at 25 degrees C. Let's take it to zero degrees C, 0, 0.0 degrees C. And if I click insulate from surroundings, that will stay at zero. Now we've got three decimal places, degree C. We can also do the same because we need to do the same. If I add warm sodium chloride to cold water, it will change the temperature of both. They'll reach an equilibrium position. So edit thermal properties and let's make the sodium chloride zero degrees C as well. The observance amongst you will just see I forgot to click. Insulate it from the surroundings. Do that one again. All good practice. Now they are both at zero degrees C. Now I can add my sodium chloride to my H2O 100.0. Pour that in. Get rid of you. Thank you very much. I now have 129.93 cm cubed milliliters at 0, 0.00 degrees C. For now, we can ignore these numbers here and we can look at this number here. We've got a mass of 64.8048 grams of sodium chloride. And you can, you can, it's perceptible, it is there, there it is sat. So the difference between the 100G and the 64G that is reported is the mass which has dissolved at zero degrees C. Okay, so I can start my little table here. I've got my temperature at zero. I've converted it to Kelvin. More of that uh, could be useful later. And the solid mass, when I previously did this, was 64.80 grams. Now it's 64.80 grams. Consistency in the software, that's good. The mass difference, I've just taken 100 from this cell here to give me 35.2. And because that's in 100 cm cubed, took 100 cm cubed of water, we should times it by 10 to get it in grams per decimeters cubed. So 351. You can look at that against the literature value and find out about that. Is it accurate? The molar solubility will be this divided by the molar mass of the sodium chloride, which is 58.44. So I've just taken this, divided it by 58.4 to give me the molar solubility. Now KSP, same as KC, products over reactants. Reactants are treated as a constant. So the product is going to be the concentration of sodium plus times Cl minus. Or it's one to one, so we can just square it. So this KSP is going to be the square of the molar solubility, which I've set it up to calculate for this column here. I also did it at 10 degrees C, 20.07 degrees C, and I could continue all the way down to 100 degrees C. So if I take that there, drag and drop, I hope that that's going to behave itself. Yes, it did. And then I can just click on my uh, temperature column, I can click on my KSP column, and I can begin to plot a graph of temperature against uh, KSP, the solubility product, for sodium chloride. You're thinking, well, how do I change the temperature? Well, you'll like this. In here, in tools, if you remember, there is a Bunsen burner. Huh. And what you can do, just as in real life, that's quite hot, 
is uh, one kilojoule per second. Let's take it down to 0 0.2 kilojoules per second. If I put it here, start to warm it, hopefully you can see that, there we go, it starts to increase in temperature as I'm adding heat energy from the Bunsen burner. You can increase the rate at which it's giving energy per second. I want to take it up to, let's take it up to about 10 degrees C. We can see the concentration is changing at the top. That could be useful information for your IA as well. And let's take it away there. So it's 9.916. At 9.916, I've got 64.3259 grams of solid at the bottom of my beaker. So I can warm up. I must uh, know accurately, precisely. It doesn't need to be dead on 10 or 20 or 30, etc. It's round about there, but none precisely. Now I can record the mass here. My spreadsheet will tell me the dissolved mass and it will change it into grams per decimeter cubed rather than grams per 100 cm cubed. Divide it by the moles to give me the molar solubility and then square that to give me the KSP. This is looking really good, right? I'm quite excited about this because I don't just have sodium chloride. I had, uh, I think it was seven, wasn't it? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. It's serious sulfate. Um, it's got to be done. So you can look at the effect of temperature on the solubility of serious sulfates, compare it with a literature value. That's the beginnings of a great IA. Why not compare, uh, we've got potassium chlorate, potassium dichromate, potassium chloride. So we've got three potassium salts. Look at the nature of the anion on the solubility, because you're keeping potassium the same. How many sodiums do you have? Sodium chloride, sodium nitrate, just two of them. But we can compare. We can even compare sodium and potassium, just one place down on the same in group one. So I think this is a rich area for internal assessment. Uh, the data processing is up there. The KSP is just beyond the syllabus. The background, you can talk about solubility products, assumptions, uh, nature of the ligand, all these things. I think this, this, this is a great possibility uh, for success in chemistry internal assessment and I've not seen many using this software so if you're on remote learning get on it enjoy thanks for watching Subscribe. Subscribe. Subscribe.